We say men ought always to pray. Paul said, pray without season. Pray without season. Because that is the only way to ensure that I am voting for God for his own to be happening. If I pray, I am enforcing that only God's will will be done. If I don't pray, I am allowing Satan. So we feel day. So, if it is possible to carry a glorious destiny and still not fulfill it, what must I do so that I can fulfill my glorious destiny? Do you understand what I'm saying? What must I do? How do you say it in God? Muko mago fe. Muko mago fe. What? Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. No? <laughs> what? <laughs> what must I do? All those great dreams you have, don't worry. After you have finished dreaming, wake up. Satan is waiting. Yes. What must I do? Satan doesn't want that dream to come to pass. Satan doesn't want you to explode financially. He knows that a million dollars in the hand of a drug dealer is empowering Satan's ministry. A million dollars in the hand of a child of God will empower God's ministry. And if God's ministry is empowered, Satan is losing. So Satan will fight the believer from assessing a million dollars. But he will give free, free chance for unbeliever. Because when he gets it, Satan has an advantage. When you get it, God has an advantage. So Satan will fight your own. That is why you must be up and doing as a child of God. You cannot just be a church member and be wearing shirt and suit and tie every day and be feeling good. No. It doesn't matter whether you look handsome or you look, you look other way. It is not, it doesn't move the devil. Satan is called the wicked. You know the devil, no devil. Devil means the evil one. That's the devil. The evil one. He doesn't care whether you're looking good or you're bad. All he cares is that he introduces his desires. So what must I do so as to ensure that the glorious destiny God has for me, I fulfill it? What must I do? One of the major issues to address or to deal with if we must fulfill our growth destiny is to consciously deal with generational altars. Do what? Consciously, willingly deal with it. Consciously deal with any time you realize that God is interested in my life. Anytime you find out that God has a glorious plan for me, the next thing to do is to start dealing with generational others. Okay. You are watching me as if I'm speaking Greek. Let me show you the truth from scriptures. Now, the, Bi <laughs> the Bible says for us to run the race that set before us, we must deal with every sin. Abi, lay aside every sin and every weight. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, isn't it? Lay aside every sin and every, we, know, we, we, all, we all know about sin. One of the weight to lay aside, eh, what is a weight? A weight is something that hangs on you. It's like a part of your body. That, that will slow down your adventure. Or even hinder you from running. Nobody, if you want to make the same boat to lose the race, just tie a bag of cement at his back. Eh? A bag of cement. Say, who say, uh, boat, you know I love you. Carry the bag of cement to the end for me. You just make him catch last for free. You just catch last for free. Even, that is why you see how they, everybody, they run. They don't wear this kind of trouser. No, they wear those bikinis. That's the only way they can be free to the air. If they wear Agbara, oh, they can't go far. Because Agbara will be a weight. Eh? They will not wear cap. This is our, our baseball cap. They won't wear, they won't wear anything. They, no! They, are, they want to be as light as possible. Even their shoes are as light as possible. Why? They want to win the race. So they must lay aside every sin, then every weight. We are conversant with the sins. Most of the times, we are not conversant with the weights. One of the weights that hangs on us 
by satanic manipulation that we don't add it to ourselves. So it comes with us. It's called generational waters. Negative generational waters. Because they can positive ones. And the ones I'm doing is positive generational waters for my children. Oh, there are some fights. They will never fight it forever. And because my engagement are building positive covenant spiritual divine generational altars. But where you and I came from, I don't know where you came from, but I know where you came from. I went there. <laughs> I went there. <laughs> oh, you see what place, that place you came from? <laughs> that, hey, that, you see that place you came from? If you don't stand up and build and, and, and war and lay aside that negative demonic generational altar, it will cling on you that you will not be able to run the race of destiny and fulfill it. An altar, a generational altar simply is a practice or an activity that has been done over a long period of time. You know that thing didn't begin from your, from your grandparents. It began from their own grandparents, then grand grandparents. So it is generational. Something that have, that have been practiced over the years. Things that have been done over the years. They have done business with Satan over the years. Somebody say, "Oh, but me in my family, we don't have any juju. You know, we don't have any idol in the house. Not in the house. Uh, yes, hey, your 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 father married three wives." Polygamy, any practice that is against the laws of God attracts the interest of Satan. Any practice that is against the laws of God attracts the partnership of Satan. So, your grandfather or your father married three, three wives or four wives. Pump became anyhow. Your father came, followed the same tone. You two you came. You know what happened? Naturally, Satan likes posterity. The same as God. So that thing has been locked up in your, in your bloodline and it passed across to you because blood is the token for transmission of spiritual virtues. That is why Jesus died and shed his blood. We didn't see the blood. But that blood is speaking for us today. It's speaking salvation for us today. Blood is the system of transmitting what? Spiritual virtues. So as long as you are from that lineage, that thing, eh? Is in the bloodline and it will flow through. It will flow through. What makes it demonic is that when you willingly disobey the ways of God over time, a spirit takes interest in making it a part of your life that can be transferred through your bloodline. This is where its generational nature comes in. Every disobedience to God is obedience to Satan. Every disobedience to God is obedience to Satan. Anytime you disobey God, you obey Satan. Oh, Pastor, you are too hard. People of God, when if Adam and Eve disobey God, you obey Satan. So, Bible says, to whom you willingly yield yourself to obey his servants, you are. So, when you disobey God willingly, you have obeyed Satan willingly. And anytime you give yourself to that kind of practice, you know what? You are establishing an altar. And we, the, the children, are always a victim of the things practiced by the fathers. Oh, yes, of course. Always a victim. Always a victim. We therefore need to deal with those original issues. In the bloodline before venturing into destiny so as not to fall a victim in our latter days so you see god can call a man of god anointing heavily and he has not dealt with those issues when he becomes a big man of god then those branches will start showing up you see then you see that fornication will start coming up a humble man of god starts people now Twa. Twa. He will start insulting people now. He will start doing all manner of things. You know why? He has not. That thing was in his bloodline longest time. But Satan is a very futuristic man. 
So he, 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 he hid it from him. And he said, you'll be growing. The more you grow, the bigger my profit. You know, it's like investment. <laughs> you put it, they say, okay, you keep it for some 10 years. You know, if you withdraw your investment after the first year, you will get some profit, but it's not big. If you keep it for 10 years, the profit is bigger. 20 years is bigger. Are you getting it? So Satan is a very investment money man. So he wants to keep it there. As you are growing, he's, he's he just allow you to grow. Grow, 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 grow. When you grow, you become a very big man. Then he begin to he begin to withdraw his 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 dividends, his profits from your life. So he say, okay, this big man of God has fallen. He didn't fall today. Oh, the investment was there all these years. He has not dealt with the investment all these years. He has not worked on it. So anytime you notice that you have a greatness in it, the first thing to do is to go back and check yourself. What are those elements in the bloodline? In my father's father's father. That is flowing down. That is, is my turn now. What is it? And start dealing with it. Because that will surely become the pitfall you have. Surely. He says surely. He says surely. Say, pastor, show me in scriptures. You know, I'm happy to do that. Gideon. Before Gideon could successfully venture into the delivery of the mandate of God upon him, he had to destroy the altar Baal that his father depicted. God knew that this altar of Baal had the capacity to fight him in the, as he's going on. So he had to first go back. God instructed him, go and destroy that altar. That's the only way. As you are adventuring, you will not be trapped. Many are the people who after getting degrees, they believe they have arrived. They jump about. And then after 5, 6, 10, 20 years, they fall like a pack of cards. You know why? Oh, was it not somebody who was in the media space? Very powerful man. What is his name? Powerful man. He was one of the voices in the media space.